So this week we're going to be returning to our survey of 19th century art history. And we're looking this week at the studio of the painter, a real allegory summing up seven years of my artistic life, which is quite a mouthful for a title. It's usually referred to as just the studio of the painter or the artist's studio. And this was painted in 1855 by Gustave Courbet. Uh, remember, this was during the period uh, known as Realism, and I'm not going to talk so much about Realism in this video. We, we know that Courbet was really the founder of the Realist movement. Um, if you, We've looked at one of his paintings before, A Burial at Ornan. If you want to learn more about Realism, I highly recommend that you look at that video. All right, so moving on now to the studio of the painter. This is, first of all, and I say this a lot, you can't appreciate the size of these works of art when they're just on a computer screen, but this is a very large canvas. It's about 11 feet by 20 feet, and you can see it today in the Musée d'Orsay. The people that are depicted in this scene are allegorical representatives of different influences of Courbet's career as an artist. It's kind of contradictory, the title, a real allegory. Those two terms, you know, are oxymorons. They mean different things. But what Courbet wanted to do is essentially encapsulate the influences that drove his career as an artist in a single painting. And if we look specifically now at this canvas, we see Courbet, he's centered in this composition. He's painting a landscape. He's got somewhat of an arrogant expression on his face. Well, you've got this young boy who's gazing upward at his work, suggestive of maybe some sort of an innocence, and this nude woman who symbolizes the characteristic nude model of the academic art world, or perhaps maybe a muse of some sort. And then on the ground you have this white cat symbolizing sportive behavior or independence. And of course, Courbet and the realists were very much into this idea of independence from authoritarianism and from conformity. And as I'm going through this, like you've already seen at this point, is I want to talk about which each, what each figure symbolizes, since this is meant to be allegorical. It's not actually people that would have been in Courbet's studio, but rather, as I said, representations of influences that shaped his career as an artist. On the right side of Courbet are his, what you might call, shareholders. They're various artists and friends that Courbet was associated with. Um, and these are people who, maybe if you know a lot about art history, you'd be familiar with. Maybe not. Um, Baudelaire, though, who was a poet and a critic, he's on the right. He's reading the book there on the far right of the canvas. Jean Fleury, which was a, a French critic, is seated. Um, over on the right side, and then you have Bruyas, who is one of Courbet's patrons, a collector. He's in profile uh, with a beard. One interesting thing is next to Baudelaire, and I don't know how easy this is to see on a screen, but there's this sort of ghostly outline of a woman, and that is most likely Baudelaire's mistress, who he actually later requested be painted over. So now we just have this kind of ghostly outline of her. On the left side of the canvas, we have people from all different walks of life and social classes impoverished individuals, wealthy individuals. The man seated there on the stool with the two cocker spaniels is most likely actually Napoleon III, who was the ruler of France at this time. He's in the guise of a hunter. And the identity of some of these other figures is less clear. There are some art critics like to uh, suggest identities for some of these individuals, and I'm not going to bother going through them because, like I said, to be honest, you've probably never heard of them. I know I haven't. Um, but I want to talk now about some of the specific history that surrounds this painting, or the context of this painting. The Salon of 1854 was cancelled, but what they did instead is they had this universal exhibition in 1855 that was designed to flaunt the cultural and the social progress that had been made in France since Napoleon III had taken power. And this big exposition included a massive art exhibition. And the exhibition accepted 11 of Courbet's paintings, but he refused. they refused to display this one in the exhibition. And Courbet, as I said, um, being a very kind of independent thinker, right, the founder of the realist movement, not uh, subordinating himself to conformity or authority, says, forget it. And he withdraws all of his paintings from the exhibition, and he opens up his own exhibition next to the main one. It was actually like, it, it was like a circus tent. It looked like a circus tent. And he called it the Pavilion of Realism. And he charged just a small, uh, modest fee for people to come in and look at just his paintings. And um, some people did. It kind of was m moderately successful at best. Um, other famous artists like Delacroix, right, the famous romantic painter, 
um, was very supportive of Corbet's endeavor, but more or less it really didn't gain as much notoriety as Corbet had hoped. And one other interesting side note here is that the, the large background that is above all of the figures that are depicted in this canvas is actually sort of a, a vestige of another one of Corbet's paintings, uh, the farmers returning from the market, which you can see here. And just notice the sky and the outline there of the tops of the trees has been replicated in, in the background of this canvas, which is sort of interesting. So this painting, in the context of realism, is very much about the, you know, the power of individual uh, the power of the individual and the individual expression, that's something that I think we really take for granted today, so it's hard to even really think about. But back then, that was kind of a revolutionary way of painting, right? If you were going to be a painter, you followed in the tradition of the, the ancient Greeks and Romans, or you, uh, you learned to paint by imitation, which Corbet did, but he wanted to paint his own way. He wanted to describe and depict the world as he saw it. And that's essentially... I think what realism was all about with without sort of the political overtones that accompanied it.